Suddenly, the sensors of the ship start going haywire. Um, and you see on your computer in front of you, uh, Rai, that a warning is starting to flash abruptly on your screens. And you get a warning from Mother. Uh, warning of an approach approaching vessel at point zero four light speed on collision course. Brace uh, for impact. Take, I will immediately take evasive maneuvers. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Like, I'll, I'll, I'll laugh in his face as, like, everything's fine, the lights go off, and as soon as the, as soon as Mother says, like, oh, there's something about to impact, like, nope! <laughs> Just 110% okay. throttle in any other direction. Alright, perfect. Uh, go ahead and make a piloting roll. Um, this one will have a... a um, it will have a modification of minus two... Uh, due to the fact that you are an extremely large vessel, and this warning came up very abruptly. Work. Now, we get? I've got a you. You didn't get any successes. But oh, here's what you no. can do. Here's what you can do. You can push your roll in this game. So if you don't succeed, you can take a point of stress and then roll it a second time. To see if you can push yourself, but you stress yourself in the same in the, in the process. So I have the talent reckless, where if I could push myself instead of doing it once, I can do it twice. So that's about to happen. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, um, so I'll I slip can, the pill bottle into your hands. So I can push any skill roll based on agility. Uh, oh, it's based on agility. Uh, where is it? I think piloting is agility based, I believe. Uh, I don't, is it? I don't know. On your character sheet, it should be beside one of your attributes. There's four attributes, and each oh, yeah, attribute so left... has three skills that are uh, tied to okay, it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Piloting is agility. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. So, so what I do? I roll it twice. Okay, or... so add a point of stress first, and then you're gonna roll okay. again. And then if you still don't succeed, you can push it again. You'll have to add another stress, but you can push it again. Most it's, it's most still times, a minus two modifier, right? It's still a minus two modifier. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So here's push once. Oh, the push once Ooh, is gonna go. succeed. Look at that. And you got a stunt. You succeed with a stunt. Awesome. Uh, yeah, we're gonna let's see. Yeah, we're showing off again. That's, showing off. It's <laughs> gonna gonna drift this ship. Just my best to get it out of the way of where this thing's gonna pop out of pop oh. out of hyperspace, wherever it's popping out of. Perfect. Everybody else on the vessel, you guys can feel the ship teetering. Uh, Captain Miller, you're kind of like holding on to the two, like in between the two chairs. Uh, Rai kind of holding on, looking at all these lights like flashing. Right as right as immediately after she said that everything was good. Uh, <laughs> What, uh, what, you guys... Captain Miller is just beaming, <laughs> just beaming. <laughs> I'm giving a giving a little look over to Rye, like, see. <laughs> Can I take a point Maybe of stress, please? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, when the alarms went off, probably all of you would have taken a point of stress. So let's go ahead and uh, I know I know we've made rolls since then, but just go ahead and add an additional point of stress to your characters. Actually, including Calm and Wilson, as you guys are being tossed about a little bit downstairs. Uh, due to this, you're not getting any warning, and all of a sudden the ship kind of just, and you guys kind of fall into uh, this, the the side like outer wall hall area down downstairs. So each of you take a point of stress as well. Start saying "Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee." Um, I got my rosary out. I start praying it, and then I look over at John. I go, oh, "We should check again," and I'm going to check my tanks again to make sure everything's all right. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, one thing I do want to mention, since you said that you grabbed your rosary, you guys mm -hmm. each have an item in your character that's like a signature item. Once per act, you can use that item to reduce one point of stress. If you're if you're choosing to use that now, calm. I mean, it, it might, be, might be just be a narrative thing for you. But if you just never this time. at any time when you want to use that, just let me know, and it will relieve okay. some of your your tension of your character. Perfect. All right. Now this this is for narrative and for effect, and also so that maybe I can ask um, uh, John if if he's aware of his Lord and Savior Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> John at this point has started to pick himself up off the ground. 
Bloody hell, what did that crazy woman do now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's for a very good reason. Uh, I, I have <laughs> full confidence in your capabilities. I'm going to find out what is going on up there. And John is now heading upstairs. I'll, I'll read straight for the captain. Excellent. I'll repeat my checks to make sure nothing got damaged in the in the move, Excellent. and then head back up. Perfect. Yeah, so it's going to take you a little time. Wilson heads right, uh, like marching straight towards the bridge. Uh, all the light warning lights have now gone off. Uh, sensors are back to normal. It seems that your skillful pilot has been able to dodge any kind of impact. And you did, in fact, see that there was a vessel that nearly struck your uh, Montero. But it is kind of like now, um, it kind of like moved kind of diagonally past you guys. And it looks like it's just like moving at the exact same speed in the exact same direction. Just kind of floating through space. What would you guys like to do? Uh, I'm going to try to get the... I'm going to take the, uh, the the packet of uh, happiness that the cap just dropped off to me and just immediately eat one or two uh, to try to... Are you reducing yes. your are you reducing your yeah, stress? Uh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. You can you can take your you can take your stress level down one, uh, as you uh, as you are. Uh, I'm, I'm now a little bit more wired and prepared for uh, prepared for whatever shenaniganery the uh, the new this okay. new ship is doing. I'm I'm gonna wait for Captain's order to see what else is going on here. Okay, I keep uh, us, keep oh, us ahead, uh, kind of uh, you know in sync with it. I mean, we got the distress signal. I'm, it looks like we found our vessel. Uh, we should try to open up uh, communications with them. Uh, Rai, is that something you'd be able to patch us through? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course. Well, I'm, I'm already working on it. And I'll and just start trying to try to make connection with the ship. Okay, go ahead and make another comm tech roll for me. Um, what? There won't be any modifications to this. Just be standard. Got it. Mm. Okay. Perfect. Success with a stunt. Um, so, all right. As you, um, as your uh, pilot is kind of trying to just kind of keep pace uh, with this vessel, you do see that it is, um, it is in fact a vessel called the USCSS Cronus. Uh, it is another um, a Wayland uh, manufactured vessel. It is a little bit larger than the Montero, uh, quite a bit. You guys would know with your experience that this type of vessel is often used uh, on science uh, exploratory missions. And the computer also gives you uh, an idea that this ship has been missing for 73 years. And it is running on what your your computer reach you're, you're reaching out to try to make comms with this thing, but it's running on minimal power. Uh, it doesn't have any exterior lighting showing, which is what made it very difficult for you guys to understand that it was you know right on your doorstep. Um, and it seems to be just repeating uh, an SOS signal every twelve seconds. Uh. Yeah, you wouldn't. You won't believe this, Captain. This is the uh, the Chronos. It's been missing for a long time, uh, seventy-three years. I mean, surely anyone on this is dead, so we don't have to check it out, right? We can just move on. Um, that does make it a little muddy. Um, uh, you're the captain. Make a decision. But- Come on. Well, the, the computer. In, how? Go ahead. There, there's, there's probably. I mean, this could be a big. This could be a big get. I mean, um, th- this this thing is known. We, you know, people have been talking about this missing vessel for for some time in the company. I'm sure if we were able to uh, ping ping this location, there might be there might be extra pay in this for us. And that's all of us. Like we're gonna we're gonna share this, of course. Um, I think it's worth looking into when you're going to need to get Wilson involved. 
that's a good segue to have Wilson walk into the room, into the bridge. As the door slides open behind you, Wilson walks in. Air slightly disheveled, <laughs> shirt slightly untucked on one side. Trauma well, hello. Was nearly killed in the tankers. Well, welcome, Your Majesty. <clears throat> <laughs> Uh, was that a little Kefka laugh? <laughs> yes, yes, it was. <laughs> Immediately scribbling on the clipboard. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, wait. The, the news that we're about to drop on you is going to uh, disregard everything that maybe was a little bit outside the, the boundaries of the, law, the, the rules and regulations. We just got a the distress signal. You might want to sit down for this, too, so you don't fall down again. Uh, distress signal from the Cronus. Uh, surely you know the Cronus. Been missing for almost a, just shy of a century, I believe. That could be a great benefit. Well, to the crew that brings it in, could be a exceptional payday, not to mention the benefit to the company to find out what was, what happened with it and what secrets remain on it. True. True. Do you have any sense of being able to quantify how much of a payday that might be? You got that on your clipboard there, maybe? <laughs> somewhere? <laughs> um... <laughs> How much would Wilson know about the company's stake in this, Michael? You, you're you not 100% sure? Other than the fact that you do know that if they refuse, everything that they would get from the current mission is just forfeit. So basically what the company believes in is not giving you bonuses, just giving you the pay you deserve in the first place. You know? <laughs> <coughs> Wilson's going to sort of look for a little bit and... The company is all about keeping to their contracts, Wilson. Uh, Wilson's going to look over at the group and say, You know the contracts as well as I do, but I suppose... Should we deal with this? We can adjust certain reports before they're ended. reaches up and gives the back of the clipboard a little bit of a pat. <laughs> I've given this a lot of thought and I have made a decision. We need to get on board that ship. We need to recover whatever we can. Um, it's for the, the best interests of the, the company. And uh, I think this will be very lucrative for all of us. I hate to say this, but I, I agree with the captain. Uh, Rai, as you say that, you also see that the mother is uh, throwing some other things on the computer in front of you. Uh, you do see that uh, the salvage operation is mandated by company rules within your current contracts. Um, and it also says there are uh, now priorities uh, listed under this new uh, directive. Priority one is recover scientific data and samples from the USCSS Cronus. Um, data point two says to escort the salvaged Cronus to Anchorhead or another Wayland yutani facility. And the third directive it gives you is save crew members on the Cronus. And then you get a kind of like downloads coming into the computer system of floor plans of the Cronus that were stored on their basically cloud, <laughs> Wayland yutani cloud. So I'm gonna send. I'm gonna give you guys access to the Cronus's um, floor plans. So you guys can see what those look like. I'm gonna share. Show to players. Show to everyone. This will be under your handouts. In um, and this one has this one has four decks. So I'm gonna share all four of these with you guys. There's an A, B, C, and D deck. It's like the the Cronus is about half the size of our ship. 
Uh, it's it's like it's probably double. Uh, I think it's double the size. Uh, it looks like the Cronus says it's only uh, 130 this... meters. Oh, and is ours it? is th okay. No, ours is 334. Yeah, I think yours like this one is more like it, it has more interior space because it's a science I vessel. You. Right. Yours is more like mm -hmm. a tanker. It's like a Mack truck basically, where it's, it's it. large but it keeps all this stuff in storage. Yeah. So, um, despite the fact that this thing has been missing for 73 years because of, like, hibernation, it, is it, oh. it's still reasonable that crew members could be alive, right? Yeah, you guys would know, too, that hypersleep it has adverse effects on aging in this world. Like, your body kind of slows the aging process almost to a crawl. So you guys would know sometimes when you're in, you're in hypersleep, you, you can actually sleep for, you can be in hypersleep for years and then wake up and still almost be the exact same age you were when you entered the chamber. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Um, Cap, if I can get on board, I might be able to, to dock that ship with us. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be an all hands on deck kind of operation because we've got we got a number of things that we're going to need to do. I think that's great. I think we get you up on there, uh, up on the the bridge of that ship, so we can sync up or whatever you need to do, so we can fly to anchor uh, anchor head. Um, sounds like we're going to need to uh, try to secure some materials over there, so we're going to need Cam and uh, uh, Miller. Uh, sorry, uh, Wilson. Uh, maybe to maybe help out with that. Um, this thing seems like it's derelict, so there might be. We're probably going to need some help, kind of getting the, the the engines running again and things like that. So um, maybe Rye, you and I can kind of tackle that and see if we can get into the, the the engine room and see if we can get this thing booted up. Uh, I'm going to try to start maneuvering our ship in a position where it can dock with the other. Perfect. Um, so you're going to need to make a piloting roll for that. And you would also know, uh, basically all of you would probably know this, but probably Davis and Captain Miller probably the most. Your ship is actually equipped with a, an umbilical, which allows you to basically like dock to another vessel. Um, and it's kind of like a little like like tunnel that you guys can walk through to get to any of the like the dry docking bays and stuff on the, with on the ship, you know. Okay, okay. So nice. Two yeah, two successes. So you, you, within, um, I mean, you can decide what your, your bonus success is based off of your, I know piloting uh, doesn't have a whole lot of choices, but it, yeah, uh, I'm going to get a plus one modification to a later skill roll related okay. to this one. So, right, so uh, just, just on the way back, I want to make sure that like we're, we're going. Just keep note somewhere on your character sheet that you, you have that because sometimes it can be an extended period of time before that happens. Uh, but yeah, with with ease, uh, Davis is able to secure the umbilical and attach it, uh, matching pace and speed with the uh, the USCSS Cronus. And you guys have attached. The best place uh, for you guys to attach, based on on your ship size, is near the top of the Cronus vessel. So you guys attach this uh, uh, umbilical, and you guys have now docked to the Cronus and are moving kind of at the exact same pace as you guys are moving along. So um, that would put us on deck A? Uh, yes, it'd be deck A, the top deck. Mm -hmm. And if you look at your, on your sheet, on your handout, where you have docked to would be uh, junction A1, uh, which is right behind uh, mother and uh, between mother and the stairwell. So you guys have junctioned onto A1 on that. Do we get a sense of how, if, if the ship's damaged in any way from the outside, or does it just look derelict? It just looks derelict. I mean, it, it would require closer inspection, but I mean, some some of you could, anybody wants to do spacewalking, there's that potential as well. Um, but that's up to you guys. Is there um, is there any way for us to connect with their, like their computer, like to do like remote diagnostics, or do we have to get on the ship to? to with do your with your check from before, you think you've got all the information that you can glean uh, remotely? Got it. Um, got it. Because the computer systems are barely, like, it's barely running on just minimal uh, power right now. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, uh, you get me on board the ship. Uh, I can boot it up, and we, we can run a diagnostic on it. And uh, uh, I'm still a little shaken from my embarrassment earlier. And like, uh, but I, you know, I can't promise anything. It's an old ship, but I can run some diagnostics. Uh, if you get me in there, I, pro- I can get it working. Okay. Uh, Calm. You have now made it back up to the bridge area and have joined uh, the group. Hey guys, Montero. Oh, big ship. <laughs> wow. Yeah, we're, we're going to be getting on here. Uh, you know, we're going to need need your help as well. Um, so, sounds good. Maybe sounds you can kind of help us out with. Uh, you, you know, there. This has been a, some time. This thing has been out of commission. Maybe we could. You want to help with maybe bringing some medical supplies and whatnot over there? Uh, is our ship? in the med bay would there be some like things that we could kind of bring over with us in case there's oh excellent good question captain actually if you guys look on your handout that's labeled the montero in your handouts at the bottom it says there is gear on the montero that the captain is uh able to distribute as as they see fit okay um, of course, you guys know about the one at the bottom, the, the P5000 power loader. Uh, it's too big to run through an umbilical. Uh, you're not going to be able to walk the giant mech thing through onto the other vessel. Uh, so it's kind of stuck here. But you also have five um, compression suits that are fully stocked with air air supply. Uh, you have an M314 motion tracker. You have a cutting torch. You have a uh, a Watasumi bolt gun, which is kind of like a a nail gun, a massive space nail gun. You have an M4A3 service pistol, which is basically your standard 9mm sidearm. You have a space sub uh, harpoon grappling gun. And you have one M240 incinerator unit, which is a massive flamethrower. Well, I think, um, Pam, uh, if if we can put you on kind of like searching for survivors and whatnot, maybe we can give you the motion tracker. Can do, Captain. Can do. Um, let's see. Cutting torch. Does anyone? Maybe either our. Pilot or uh, uh, Rai? I mean, yeah, what, what, what are you, Santa Claus? Or are you just like handing out random, <laughs> random gear? I mean, it's not random. Well, what, we what, might need it. It might be useful. <laughs> this is the old ship. Torch? We could encounter anything over there. Yeah, Cap, I'll, I'll take the cutting torch in case the door to the pilot to the, uh, the base closed. You know, I, I get my way in there as fast as I can. Yeah, well, I'll take the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Something we might actually use if we do run into, you know, whatever. I'm sure, uh, sure. Jerry Acker sleeping in space are a real threat right now. <laughs> I think we'll I'll give hand you... Out. I'm going to hand Rai the nail gun. Okay. You hand Rai the nail gun? And I'm going to take the pistol. Okay. <laughs> Just as a power play. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... It's very funny. We'll give, uh... keeping the pistol? I'll take the pistol if you want to take the incinerator. I would be happy to. Okay, I'm trying something. If you guys look down uh, where your names are, there should be a card next to some of you. Can you click on that card and open it? Yep. Okay, yep. so that is like a card that yeah. tells you exactly what that item does. Um, so I've got the incinerator mm. to Wilson. I've got the pistol to Miller. And I've got Rye with the bolt gun. Um, I uh. don't have a card for. I have a card for the harpoon, a grappling gun. I think we'll give that to. Uh, 
Cham. I have, I'm having a hard time with the pronouncing Cham. 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 That's okay. <laughs> and and there's no card for the motion detector. I'm assuming. Uh, there is yeah, no card for. Wait, what did I just do? I just put the card on the. There you go. I'm trying to give you a card, but it won't let me. Uh, go and take it. Yeah, I think you have to turn it to the deck and then deal it. So I have I have a cutting torch. There's no card for the cutting torch, right? You got a hard time. think that the captain who's been getting who Wilson has been given a hard time this entire time hands him a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> um So well, that should go in the report, right? Like <laughs> That's right, that's right. If you guys look in your um in your your gear part and your journals there are two there are uh, vision devices that are access to all uh, for all of you They're, they didn't make cards for all these items so the m314 motion tracker is listed under vision devices yeah uh, it. it has a weight of one and um it can it can sense a long range of course it's only motion so it's only going to detect anything that's that's currently moving uh, within that range um your are uh, your suits, your compression suits, are MK. What did it say? Th uh, MK MK fifties. So if you look under armor, uh, suits and armor, uh, compression suits. There's five of them on the vessel. Basically, it's like the the standard like astronaut space like suit that you see them wearing in Alien. It has the light on the top and comm systems inside. Uh, it offers a, an armor rating of two. Its air supply is five uh, when you when you wear it. Um, uh, and the way uh, supplies work in this game is if you're using it and there's a supply uh, number after every what they consider um, a, a turn in this game is 5 to 10 minutes so like the exploration of like 2 rooms or something like that every time that happens you make a supply roll and if you roll a 1 on your supply roll it drops by 1 until you lose all your air supply. So I think we could each, we've got enough for each of us to take one of those. Yeah, the suits, yeah, everybody can have a compression suit. What was uh what was uh Davis taking? Uh Davis taking the cutting torch, I believe. Cutting torch. Yeah, I do not have a card for the cutting torch. It's it's fine. I, I see it under the tools section. Yeah, it's it probably gives under uh tools. plus 2 to heavy machinery and has a power supply of 5. Okay. So does that mean each time I use it, I have to roll? Yep, every time you use it, then... you have to roll supply, and if you roll a 1, it goes down by 1 until it runs okay. out. Mm -hmm. Is that the same thing for the flamethrower? Or it's got a, it says it's got a, two uses. It says it has two uses? Or uh, two reloads. Two reloads. The way reloads work is the way this game does ammunition is if you if you stress and panic using your object, using your item, you basically unload the clip or the or the the supply. So if you roll a panic with a fully automatic weapon, you just drain the clip and you're out of ammunition. And then you have to use like a slow action to reload it again. If you have reloads available. If you don't, you're just out of ammo. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you don't panic, then it's pretty much you're, Yeah, you you're you're, you're you're fine. Like it doesn't it doesn't nitpick the uh, the okay. ammunition. It's basically as as you keep a level head. That's right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> nice and calm, torch everything. <laughs> so I will say since you guys are taking a moment to sit here and talk about a plan and get things situated that everybody can remove uh, their stress as you guys got a moment of being able to calm down and sit here and the, the uh, captain is kind of distributing these these items from the Montero and you take kind of take a short rest regather your thoughts and what would you guys like to do 
Do you get to remove all of it or just one? I all. had two stressors. Take take them all off. Yep, you get to okay. remove them all. Mm -hmm. cool. After about like five to ten minutes of rest, you guys can you take a stress point off. So I would say you guys got about twenty to thirty minutes here of just getting things ready uh, that you guys can relieve your stress. Uh, so game plan, me and Cap, if it's okay, uh, I'd like to I'd like to get to the to the bridge of the other ship. Uh, I don't know if you want to come with me, or if you want to set, come with, if we want Rai to come with me. We'll yeah, try actually, to get everything operational at the bridge, and then I think if we get to the bridge, maybe we can do. Uh, that's where uh, Rai, you'd be able to maybe do some diagnostics to see where in the ship we might need to go. So maybe the three of us will go together, um, check things out there, see what we need to do uh, to get the ship online. Why don't we have um, Com and uh, Wilson, if you want to kind of survey uh, areas of the ship, see if we can maybe get to where the hibernation pods are so we could see if any of the survivors are there and we can treat them or take care of them however we need to. Sure. Anything you say, Captain? Right or reroad? Looks like that is on the same deck. Oh. The same deck we are linked to, so. And uh, there should be co communication spots throughout the ship, right, where we could stay in contact with each other with the intercom, just like on ours. So we could we could try to stay in communication about what's going on with each of us. Yeah, you guys do know your compression compression suits do have yep. internal comms. Uh, and oh, Rai, Rai would good. also know that the, the comms on the other ship are probably disabled until everything else is activated. Okay, but we still, we, well, through our suits, we could stay in touch. That's good. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why don't you say something else obvious, Captain? <laughs> kidding um i'm gonna, I'm gonna... <laughs> i don't know dude are the, are the alerts about to go off is everything okay there rye get mouthy with me <laughs> i'm just gonna glare i'm gonna try to grab the captain uh for a one-on-one -on -one, uh, in just a second if there's a chance yeah if there's like a moment where i can like talk to her privately yeah it looks like uh the rest of the group uh, I would assume everybody's kind of getting ready to get their compression suits on just in case. Um, just getting things ready to go. Yeah, you guys got a moment off to the side. What is this, Ryan? Do you just want to do a little one on one in subordination or. <laughs> 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 wanted to say like we got to keep our priorities straight we're here to do the job the only reason we're stopping for the ship is because we have to to get paid so we have three things to do let's do them and let's get back and let's finish the job and get paid so right. sound good to you? i mean we are in a total alignment on this you know as well as i do how much we make off of each of these runs you know we're getting nickel and dimed by Wilson, um, when our look at look at the difference in these ships. Like ours is barely hanging on, you know, with whatever short term fixes that we could put together. Like we're never going to make headway unless we do a big job like this. Like this is this is an opportunity for us to make buco bucks and actually be able to get our own ship. You know, I want you to be a part of that too. You know, like I, I don't care for this whole attitude thing all the time, but you're good. You're good at what you do. I'd like to keep you on board. I, uh, uh, well, I, you know, sometimes you do make good decisions, Captain. I, I, uh, I just, uh, I don't know. I just, I grew up. That's how, I, you know, how you, how you survive. You can't just clap and and make nice and sing kumbaya all the time. No, that's how people get killed, right? That's all it is. It's just, uh, you know. But yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Let's make some money. Let's do it. Let's make some money. Absolutely. Let's do this. Excellent. All right, and then I'll, I'll join, rejoin the group. Put my suit on. Okay. Uh, any any others want to do anything uh, before they uh, suit up and get ready for this excursion? 
All right. Someone's gonna I take will, a quick I will. wander down to the med lab. <laughs> okay, go to the med lab. Sure. And just to see if there's any other like last minute things that we may uh, want or need to bring with us. There is currently in your med lab one a, a one basically medical aid uh, travel size medical aid, aid kit. Wilson will grab um, that and bring it with him as well. This med lab hasn't seen too much use, so it isn't as stocked as some med labs would be. Ma basically for minor things, like if if Com got like uh, one of the tanks like accidentally dropped on his toe or something while he was unloading, loading things like that. That's all this is really stocked for. But Wilson will bring it anyway. Okay. Got it. I, I'm going to do a little bit of praying. Okay. And. Uh, ask uh for the 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 safe passage for me and my comrades uh to go and rescue anybody who is still here and uh just have a little moment there and then i will suit up and try to find rye to you know go look out there all right buddy <laughs> thanks the the medical kit that you got wilson does a uh, plus two on a medical aid check Right. So you guys have all suited up in your compression suits uh, and are gearing up to make uh, your travel over the short umbilical to the junction area where you guys have attached to the Cronus. Are all of you going together? Uh, yeah, I think initially yeah. we are. <laughs> okay, gotcha. So I'm going to take you guys over to a new map. And you should be able to see it. This is the map of the, the Cronus. And you guys, I'm going to shift ping you to the junction which you are attached to, which is right here. And if you guys want to drag your character tokens onto that point uh, in Rule 20, you can. Uh, as you guys are moving through the umbilical of the Montero as it stays connected. Um, How do I do that? Grab your <laughs> from uh, grab your character sheet from the left and just yeah. If you just go over here to oh, okay. the side and just drag your name over, it should just pop it right down there over, and it should just appear with your token there. I think I have. Oh, uh, I got you. Yeah, yeah. If you just, just drag uh, your name right over there, it should put your token in that spot. I there see. you go. Perfect. Yep. You guys are all there. Okay, so you guys make your way through the. Uh, extension immediately uh, making your way to the main airlock you can see that it is damaged the outer door is damaged it almost seems like it is uh, damaged from the inside as if it was like uh, imagine something uh, something happened on the inside to make it kind of pu push out the slightest bit and it doesn't look like it's sitting right now this is already not what we were expecting what I don't know Wilson does this ring any bells with you is there any reports that you've read about I don't know strange things happening on ships like this that we should know about what could have done this well, all we have on the Cronus is that it vanished, as I, as we are all aware. It's, I mean, to, but is it bowed out? Yeah, it's kind of buckled from the inside. But would it, it sort of looks at the, just the general remainder of it. Explosions? A little oh. beyond my, if something ruptured, perhaps a, oxygen tank or some other supply was set near the airlock. Hmm. Is there, a, there's another door out of here that is not damaged? Um, well, basically it's kind of like your, your umbilical tunnel kind of attached to this part around this door. So like okay, you guys so can get to it. Room. You're still in the oh. umbilical. You haven't even oh, okay. you haven't you haven't gotten in. And this is like the we're outer door okay. of an inner like airlock. You would know there'd be an inner door as well. So the actual door is buckled. The door is buckled. Yeah. 
Got it. Okay, I thought mm. it was the ship. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, there's the old-fashioned way. Someone could have been hammering on the door, trying to break it open. Mm, okay. Get out of the ship? I guess. In the middle of space. Look, I'm not... I, I'm not... I'm not trying to explain what some crazy crew members were doing on some ship somewhere. I just, I'm just saying that that might be one way. Hey guys, standard brainstorming rules. No ideas, dumb or wrong. <laughs> just looking at everything first, See, right? Lion, Lion Run gets it. Is there any way for us to assess whether it's safe to open this up? Um, if we might be like releasing any kind of like explosion kind of thing into our umbilical cord pod um it's it's unknown because you can't see inside so you're not really sure uh you do know that if you if you had to like if you had to like cut this door off your umbilical could still pressurize this place to make it to where you guys don't get like ejected into the vacuum of space which is always a good thing <laughs> well, well it's gonna sort of come up uh, a little bit sort of beside where uh davis is after and I, i'm sure there's nothing but just imagine if you were to cut the door open what if there was something an expressive decompose uh decompression wouldn't that be fun exciting even hey that's that's the cap's decision as I'm like getting ready to start lighting the cutting torch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to suggest the same thing, but it, uh, maybe in not so eager terms of explosions and such. Uh, I'm going to air. I'm kind of glass half full on this, so yeah, I say light it up and let's see what happens. <laughs> see, right it, right after Wilson said that, he's, taking, he's back backing up in the umbilical. <laughs> he's lighting the firecracker <laughs> and getting the hell out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rai's doing the same. Rai's standing right right next to Wilson. Okay. All right. uh, so excellent. I'll let everybody back up a little bit just in case, and I'll start uh, trimming up the uh, thing with the cutting torch here. Okay. Cutting. I will I will stay as close as I can I'll safely so in case machinery. I need to yank her out. Okay. So would you say that uh, Com is helping this uh, this this check? It, yeah. If mm -hmm. if if sure. Kayla or if Rai needs help, I mean, I would happily give any help I have. And uh, well, I think Davis, Mil Miller's Davis, not, you're making maybe a check, right? helping so much. Davis has the cutting torch, right? The Davis pilot. has the cutting okay, torch. Okay, so yep. it'd be Davis that was doing it. So Wilson's right. gonna look at Rye, who backed up right beside him. Shall we bet, say, one percent on what happens? Hey, now your one percent is not the same as my one percent, <laughs> and don't even pretend that that's not the case. I know I'm the lowest paid person on this ship. Which means if you win, you gain more than I do. Uh, <laughs> Shit. <laughs> He's right. All right, deal. <laughs> nice. A deal has been made. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Captain, you were saying something about... Oh, I was just going to say, uh, Captain Miller is standing pretty close to Leah. Not really because she wants to, but she's got to show solidarity with this decision so she's staying pretty close and just kind of watching okay excellent i'm gonna i'm gonna count this a plus two modifier to a heavy machinery roll so i already get a plus two from the cutting torch yeah so uh, you uh, you had a plus four so mod plus four yeah okay cool that's good because my heavy machinery skills are terrible. <laughs> how many successes we get out of that none uh it didn't roll anything for some reason mm -hmm. Weird. Do you have like a zero in uh, I have a one. both of those? You have a one. Let's try this. There it goes. So, so no, that's that was just a straight roll. Hold on. Plus. So it oh, didn't... you know what? I I know what happened. There we go. Ah, uh, there can't it is. Do plus four. I have to do a. I just have to a do four. Just a regular four. Yeah, you can't do the symbol. <laughs> so one success. You have succeeded. So, uh, Davis with Miller kind of standing there offering support and confidence in the decision to do this uh, with calm kind of help and kind of guide uh, knowing uh, his knowledge of, you know, this, this kind of thing. 
You guys carve out around, and the airlock, or the outer airlock door opens. Uh, there's a, a little bit of a kind of a, a pressure kind of sequencing uh, balance going in. You can feel that the air inside this ship is a lot colder already, as you guys feel some of the temperature coming out, even with the uh, the inner door lock sealed. Um, some of the cold vacuum of uh, just the cold nature of space in general. Um, you guys have access into the inner door. Wilson curses a little bit under his breath. And looks over <laughs> <right>. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, on, on the comms, uh, Dave's going to say, I'll take a cut of that, right? Oh, you can have it. I'll give you a slice. 1% of 1%. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> 